If you've been completely emptying and deleting your Gato Engine scene tree when changing levels or loading scenes in your game, this tutorial will change how you think about your scene structure. These tutorials are part of a long series of user interface tutorials for Gato, and as always, you can grab the source files for this and all of my Gato tutorials on my Patreon. In this video, we'll set up a scene container structure where we can load and unload scenes without deleting everything in the tree. This means less saving and loading data between different scenes, and in fact, you can just keep things like your UI or your player scene untouched with this setup. The idea is we create a main scene that will contain our three main game components, 3D, 2D, and UI. These containers will hold any scene we load and unload, and everything will be controlled via the main game controller script. First, create a new scene with a basic node as the root. Name this something like game controller and attach a new script. Add a base node 3D, node 2D, and control node as children, and name them world 3D, world 2D, and GUI. The game controller script will contain functions that load and unload scenes. Remember, we're doing this manually. So we have more flexibility in what we actually do with the old scenes. We don't have to delete them. We could just hide them or remove them from the tree. You may be asking, why does this matter? First, I suggest you check out the link in the description for a more in-depth explanation of the pros and the cons, but basically it boils down to memory and data. Deleting a scene or node removes it from memory and you have no access to its data. Hiding a scene keeps the data accessible and it will still process an update, but do this too much and it could bog down the CPU. Removing a scene keeps it in memory, but it no longer updates with new data. It's easy to add to the tree again, but the data within the scene could become old. We want this game controller script to be accessible everywhere, so we need a global autoload script, and you can do that by going to Project Settings, Autoload, and adding a new node. In the global script, add a variable game controller and set it to the game controller type. In the game controller script, set class name to game controller and add this line to the ready function to set the variable reference in the global script. You should now be able to access the script from any other node or script. Add export variables for the three scene types, 3D, 2D, and control, and set those in the inspector. Add three more variables to hold a currently loaded scene for each. I've loaded my splash screen manager from the last episode in the GUI spot and have set that node as the current GUI scene. This could be your own scene, or you can load your first scene dynamically in script later. Then we add the first of three similar functions, change GUI scene. This function takes a parameter from the new scene we want, which will be the scene location in the file system, a delete boolean for if we want to delete the old scene, and a keep running boolean for when we want to just hide the scene and keep it running in the background. This option only matters if we don't delete the old scene. In the function, check if the current GUI scene is null. If it's not, then we check if we want to delete it. If we do, we free the scene. If we want to keep it and keep it running, we set the visible property to false. If we don't want to run it, we remove it, but keep it in memory. Then we load and instantiate the new scene, add that scene as a child to the GUI container node, and set the current GUI scene to the new scene. You could make this more complex in your handling of the scenes, but this is a basic setup that will load and unload your scenes. Create the same function with adjusted references to 2D and 3D in these two other functions. We can now test our scene change. In my splash screen manager, we currently use the change scene to packed function when we press a key to skip the splash screens. Now we can replace that with this line to load our main menu scene when we press a key. 